Hi, I'm Matt Schaefer, and welcome to DevOps Cats, where we go over topics that help tear down the wall between development and operations. Previously on DevOps Casts, we talked about Chef Server. If you followed along, you should now have a functioning Chef Server that we'll build on in this episode. We're now in part two, where we'll talk about how to upload cookbooks to your Chef Server and attach application nodes so that they can run your cookbooks and provision themselves on demand. So let's get to it. First, run a quick knife client list to make sure you can talk to your Chef Server. If you have any trouble getting the list back, you may need to debug a bit. One common problem we saw last time was clock skew. So make sure that your laptop and server are in sync with the time server. Remember, we use the NTP date command to fix the clock. If you still can't get a list, check your knife RB. If you're running Chef on a VM, double check that the server URL is correct. Some VMs will rotate IP addresses between boots. If you're still having trouble, feel free to email me or comment on the show notes. First, we'll need space to keep our cookbooks. When using Chef Server, we'll use the ops code Chef Repo as a base. This allows us to use some built-in knife commands to manage our cookbooks and their dependencies. In this episode, we'll be installing a MySQL server. We'll use the off-the-shelf MySQL cookbook this time, instead of writing our own. This is a much more complex cookbook than the Nginx cookbook we wrote in episode 1, so it'll serve as a good base for upcoming screencasts on the more advanced features of Chef. Knife comes with a built-in tool for downloading these cookbooks. The command to run here is knife cookbook site install MySQL, and we specify the dash o option with the full path to the cookbooks folder. This will download the MySQL cookbook from opscode, as well as the cookbooks it depends on. In this case, there's only one dependency, OpenSSL. The MySQL cookbook uses this to generate random secure passwords for your MySQL server. To avoid setting the cookbook path every time we run a command, we can change the cookbook path listed in knife RB. We can use these cookbooks as is, so next we'll upload them to the Chef server using the knife cookbook upload command. Here, we set the dash D option so that the OpenSSL dependency will also be uploaded. Now that we've uploaded the cookbooks, we'll attach a node to the Chef server that we can run them on. I have another VM here, but it hasn't been prepared yet. Like we did with our Chef server, we'll set the hostname first. Chef uses host names as a unique identifier for each node, so it's important to set this early on. You can change it later, but it's somewhat involved, so better to have it set right from the start. The last gotcha before we bootstrap our host is that we'll also need the validation key from our Chef server. This key is used by the node to ensure it's talking to the expected Chef server. We'll do this by simply copying the text from the validation.pem file on the server and pasting it into the file on our local Chef directory. Then, we fix our knife RB to reference the file we've just created. Now to prepare the node for running Chef recipes, we'll use the knife bootstrap command. This command is provided with Chef. It's a little less automatic than the knife prepare command that you saw in episode 1, but it works in a way that fits more closely with Chef server. The first arguments are my username and a password, followed by the dash D option, which tells the bootstrap command which distro I'm using and how I'd like to install Chef. In this case, it's using Ubuntu 10.04 and using RubyGems to install Chef. The sudo argument tells Knife to preface any commands with sudo since the Ubuntu user doesn't have root privileges. The last two commands are the run list, in this case, the MySQL server recipe, and which IP address to bootstrap. The bootstrap command will install all the necessary components to run Chef and configure the node to talk to the same Chef server that's in our local Knife config. Finally, it'll set up a node configuration that includes the MySQL server recipe and run that. Depending on your internet connection, this could take some time, so I've sped it up here. Once this is done, we can run knife node list and see the node that we just set up. Now let's try connecting to our new MySQL server. As you can see, we need a password to connect. That password was generated randomly and stored safely in Chef's node database. To access it, we use the knife node command with the dash M option to show normal attribute data. This will show us the node data that was created during the recipe run, but skip all the information that was discovered by Ohai. So here's our password, which I'll copy so we can connect to our server. And now we're in. Normally, you won't need to copy and paste this around, since you can access that data from inside Chef recipes. We'll talk more about how to do that later. 
Let's say we want to make a change to a configuration setting on MySQL. For example, the max allowed packet size. Since our configuration is controlled by Chef now, we'll look on our MySQL cookbook to see how it's getting set up. In the MySQL cookbook directory, there's a templates default folder that contains the my.cnf.erb that gets used to generate the MySQL configuration on the server. We can see here that the maxallowed packet size gets set from the MySQL tunable maxallowed packet node attribute. The default values for node attributes are read from the attributes file that matches the recipe we ran on this node, in this case, server.rb. If we scroll down to find the max packet size, we can see here that it's 16 megabytes. Now, we could change it here, but that would increase the size for any node that we use this cookbook on. I'd rather have this parameter default to 16 megabytes, but be 32 megabytes on our new MySQL node. To do that, we can use the knife node edit command. This will open the node configuration file in our preferred editor. For me, this is Vim. To set your editor, place a line like this in your bash RC or local user profile. Now in the MySQL section, we add the tunable max allowed packet attribute. When we save and quit the editor, Knife will upload the new node configuration to the Chef server. This node information will get used to correct the file the next time Chef runs. Now we could use the Knife SSH command to explicitly invoke the Chef client on the node, but that's not nearly as much fun as having our node continuously update itself. To set this up, we need to install Chef client on our node. Of course, there's a cookbook for this. We'll use Knife again to download it from Opscode and upload it to our own Chef server. Then, we'll use the knife node edit command to add the chef client recipe to the node's run list. Now by default, the chef client checks in once every half hour. For this demo, we'll set it to every 5 seconds so that we can see the effects of our work more quickly. And finally, we'll use the knife ssh command to run the chef client manually. The knife ssh command can also be used to search for nodes and execute commands on all nodes of a given type, but we'd have to take a bit more time to set up DNS and ssh to allow for that. So today, we'll just specify the host and authentication information manually. We can use knife ssh again to show that our max packet size has indeed been increased to 32 megabytes. Now say we want to change it to 64 megabytes. We can use the knife node edit command again, change it to 64 megabytes, wait 5 or so seconds, and the chef client will come around again, find the updated configuration, and update the max allowed packet size. Of course, this gets even more exciting as you add more nodes to your chef server, but to really make use of it, we'll have to cover a bit more about how recipes, roles, and attributes work together to coordinate your nodes across your environment. So we'll save those topics for later. For our next episode, I'm planning to take a break from Chef and talk about some monitoring packages that you can use to help make sure your environment is operating correctly. Of course, if you have any feedback, feel free to leave a comment on the show notes. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.